Welcome to Get Married. I'm Colin Cowie. Most brides have pictured themselves walking down the aisle on their wedding day since they were young. The aisle too needs to make a statement. We'll show you some unique ways to make the most important walk of your life. And I'll share one of my secrets for a chic, unforgettable wedding. And I'm Deanna Pappas. Your wedding day look is about more than just your gown. We've got the info you need to choose the right bridal bling and more. Get ready, it's Get Married. Don't let your engagement euphoria turn into planning panic. GetMarried.com and I have all the advice, tips, trends and planning tools that you need to make sure that your day is both stress-free and memorable. You'll feel like you're floating on air when you come down the aisle to meet your groom. But remember that art plays an important part in creating an impression. After all, it's the first time your guest will witness your wedding day style. So get creative. We've got some impressive ideas for hours that go beyond traditional to make your walk one of a kind. Your ceremony sets the tone for the rest of the event, telling guests what kind of an evening they're in for. So it's important to create something spectacular and reinventing your owl can do just that. When thinking about setting up your ceremony, you want to focus in on that aisle because your aisle is your runway. You're going to walk down that runway, all eyes are going to be on you, so that runway should look fabulous. If you're in a garden ceremony, you can have a lawnmower cut a path, a certain pattern into your aisleway. Also, beach is one of my favorites. We did a beach wedding and the bride and groom couldn't afford to get married in Hawaii but they wanted to feel like they were in Hawaii. So we actually created a arch for them made out of bamboo and palm fronds. On the chairs, we took starfish and we decorated them with orchids and we actually hung those from all of the chairs down the aisle. The aisle was covered with orchid blossoms all the way down. It had a tropical feel. So that's one way you can take that ceremony space and really make it your own. Alternative shapes can make for striking ceremonies too. I really, really, really recommend ceremonies in the round, especially for a larger wedding. When you do a ceremony in the round, everyone's within four or five rows, so you feel so much more connected to it. I created a meandering um, pathway as opposed to a straight aisle, and we used the centerpieces, which were all multicolored tulips, but in addition, flowering azaleas and hedges and all different kinds of flowering plants and branches and things like that to create this garden look. Before you decide to design a yellow brick road, check with your venue and make sure the church, temple or sanctuary doesn't have restrictions you need to work within. The biggest thing is they don't want things taped onto their pews and things like that. They're worried about people slipping on petals. There's always alternatives. You can use silk petals. You can use an aisle runner where as long as it's taped down, they're gonna be okay with it. From custom monogrammed runners to entrances from all sides, walking down your aisle should make you feel like a supermodel on a runway. For more great aisle ideas, check out ideas and decor on the planning pages of getmay.com. And to help keep you on track with your wedding details, be sure to use our planning tools. When you walk down the aisle, all eyes are going to be on you and your dress. But your bridal bling, veil, shoes, and even handbag rounds off a look. So how do you make sure your accessories are making the right statement? Well, we had some design experts weigh in on picking the perfect pieces. Your wedding gown will grab all the guests' attention on your wedding day. But for a look that's complete and captivating, you can enhance your dream dress with gorgeous jewels. Just remember, less is more. It can be so much that you it's here comes the dress instead of here comes the bride. I really believe that um, the way to kill a beautiful dress is with bad jewelry. I mean, there, there's really no other way to do it. Choose your accessories by considering your hairstyle and your neckline, as well as the design on your dress. Sometimes the most stunning look is the world's simplest strapless gown 
with very intense, gorgeous, over-the-top accessories. We think it's all about balance. You know, if the gown is extremely decorative, then perhaps your accessories should be a little bit more refined, a little more subtle. But if your gown is less elaborate, why not follow this hot accessory trend? I think the most important trend is the, the statement piece. It can be a rather large necklace or pendant or perhaps beautiful drop earrings, crystal and pearl. It can be vintage jewelry or it can be colored gemstones. Those statement pieces that they can wear throughout their lifetime. It doesn't have to be just for the wedding. They can't really wear the dress again, but they can wear the statement pieces that they purchase. It's something that can carry on with you for years to come, and you'll always remember how special it is because it was your bridal jewelry. Your statement piece could even be your headpiece. Forgo the traditional veil and show your individual style with feathers, a la Carrie Bradshaw's eye-popping accent in the film Sex in the City. In Sex in the City, the big feather headpiece with the big veil um, makes a statement. But if over the top isn't quite you. They could do small feather pieces and then either put it in a low chignon and then stick it there or right in the side here. It gives it a little um, whimsy and romance. Another accessory that will carry special meaning for you is a family heirloom. I think all brides should not borrow any jewelry. They should wear something that belonged to their mother or their grandmother or something they were given by their groom. That to me is just more honest. I think that's what's most important. So even if you think it doesn't go with the gown, I think you should wear it because it has sentiment and it's important in your, in your personal history. Whatever you do, make sure the accessories you do choose make you shine. Really take a look at yourself and take a look at your gown and what goes with the look and what you feel the most comfortable in and let your own beauty be the guide. For more beautiful accessories from headpieces to jewelry, check out our fashion finder in the gown gallery pages of GetMarried.com. Coming up next on Get Married, planning a wedding can be overwhelming, so trust an expert. We've got tips for you on how to hire the right wedding planner. And when you're planning, don't forget one key factor, how you're getting to your ceremony. We'll show you very cool transportation options. Plus, you'll get priceless advice from Get Married's own wedding guru, Colin Cowie. That's just ahead on Get Married. You may think hiring a wedding planner is a budget buster, but the truth is they can actually save you some money. Here's some tips on how to find the perfect planner for you. Number five, determine your needs. A bride should kind of figure out how much wedding planner that she need. Because many times when I have brides sit down with me, they know what they want. Because many brides know what they want and they've been thinking about their wedding since they've been five years old. But a lot of times they don't know where to begin. And that's where we come in. There are many of our clients that are stay-at-home moms. And then there's many of our clients that work full time and they go to school at night. So then they need the planner. Number four. Expect experience. A wedding is the one time you have to get it right. You get one chance only. And if you hire a wedding planner who doesn't have a lot of experience, she may not be able to step in and handle problems, a crisis at the last minute. And the bride and groom needs to be 100% relaxed. They need to know that every single problem that happens is going to be handled and they shouldn't even know about it. And someone that has a lot of experience has seen it all. We go through this every weekend. We have seen every possible crisis that can come up and we know how to handle it with grace. You get somebody who hasn't done it for very long and they come across a big crisis and they may not know what to do. Number three, do your research. A bride should look for, first and foremost, the code of ethics, what they stand for. They should also look at their referrals, but also see their work. Photo galleries should be really extensive so you can see the wedding planner's work. Not to say that your wedding is gonna be like that past bride, but you can kind of get an idea of some of the weddings that they've planned in the past so you can see if that's a good fit for you in the future. Number two, be certain they're certified. Find out if the individual is certified. There are indeed many universities and courses around 
that could train and you want to make sure that the person has received adequate training before you trust them with your most important day. Number one, check the attitude. The wedding planner is going to be that one person that's going to be with you from the very beginning until the very end, including the wedding day. You should look for their friendliness, their respectfulness, their kindness towards you. Your rapport is probably the biggest thing. That is the one person who you're gonna go with for advice, all your meetings they're probably going to attend with you, and so forth. So you wanna make sure that it's somebody that you're comfortable with. For information on wedding planners in your area, head to the local resources pages of GetMarried.com. So many brides and grooms worry about getting to the ceremony on time, when they should really be concerned about getting there in stress-free style. We've got some hot ways to get you to the main event in an unforgettable ride. Transportation is important for the wedding day because it allows the bride and groom not to have to worry about getting from their house to the church, a photo stop, they arrived at each destination on time, and they're relaxed and ready to have a good time. There are so many options for wedding transportation, but this is a great time to let your groom take the wheel in the planning process and make some choices that suit his style. The antique Rolls Royce Silver Clouds, great looking cars, they're the essence of a wedding. It really is something special. The traditional Lincoln stretch, give people that standard. You don't want your limousine to outshine your wedding itself. Or, oh, if you and your groom want something really over the top, spectacular. Fleet of two-tone limousines, silver and black or burgundy and black, those are great cars. They have Lamborghini doors on them, disco floors, underglows, police strobes, karaoke machines inside of them. It really is a rolling party. But remember, while wedding transportation for you and your groom may be about style, for your out-of-town guests, it's about convenience. Having a coordinated transportation company set up to bring your guests to this location is great because it makes it that much more enjoyable. Nobody's stressed out about finding their way in a city that they've never been in. It makes it just that much better. But transportation isn't limited to just getting from one place to the other. The wheels for your bachelor and bachelorette parties can put a whole new spin on the saying, it's not the destination, it's the journey. For bachelor and bachelorette party transportation, the party buses have really become a phenomenal tool because it is a party on wheels with big screen TVs and neon and LED lighting. It really is the essence of a rolling club. You have the ability to party on the vehicle while you're on your way to the club, which makes it a lot more fun, just makes it so much more memorable. So if you haven't figured out your transportation yet, remember this, add some personality to your wedding day and arrive in style but make sure your guests arrive stress-free and before you do. To find limousine services and other great wedding professionals and venues in your area, check out the local resources pages at getmarried.com. Up next on Get Married, I've got a tip to keep your wedding chic and you'll see a gorgeous Savannah wedding that's full of outdoor charm. Stay with us. In the past, nearly every wedding ceremony looked like it had been stemmed from the same cookie cutter. Almost all took place in a house of worship with a long straight aisle. Not anymore. These days, brides are branching out with their own ceremony to call. In my book, Wedding Chic, I share some tips to make your ceremony uniquely personal. Now, flowers aren't the only option for ceremony to call. There are lots of ways to decorate. The biggest way to make a unique impact is with your grand entrance. Consider coming down a curved aisle or one that's beautifully bordered by rose petals or succulents. For an outdoor fall ceremony, scatter dried leaves. You can also use an aisle runner embroidered or hand painted with all the names of your guests. For memorable seating style, have your guests seated in the round. Or they can sit on plush benches rather than traditional chairs. Now the spot where you take your vows needs to have an amazing focal point for your backdrop. This could be something like an altar, an arch or a hooper. You can decorate any of these structures with flowers or other elements that complement your location. Shoals are ideal for a beach wedding, moss for a mountain wedding, and vines for a country affair. Obviously, we use florals for a great visual impact. 
One of my favorites is the backdrop of crystals hanging on monofilament in the shape of a cross. The crystals caught by the natural light of the moon creates a gorgeous romantic backdrop. Another personalized decor item could be a kneeling cushion monogrammed with the joint initials for a church ceremony. But when it comes to your floral scheme, make sure that your bridal party's flowers complement the choice of flowers in the ceremony decor. These ideas can help you truly personalize the most important part of your wedding and create a beautiful chic setting as you take your vows. For more of my tips on having a fabulous wedding, check out my page on getmarried.com. Southern charm, outdoor chic, and some unpredictable weather. The makings of an endearing, unforgettable Savannah, Georgia wedding. Planner Bethany Hewitt of Southern Graces Catering shows us why this wedding is one of her personal favorites. My favorite wedding was the Scott Stroud wedding here in Savannah, Georgia. The bride really wanted to have the wedding at her mother's house on Tideman Park. The bride envisioned getting married in the park and then as she and her husband have children together, the grandchildren being able to play there in the same park where they were married. This wedding was a fall wedding, although the bride was specific in that she didn't want too much of the browns and reds and oranges, so we used the antique blue hydrangeas with willow, three different types of pink roses, and then we did also bring in a really rich burgundy, which gave its hint to fall. The bride's mother actually owns an antique shop and art gallery. She has many artistic friends who were more than willing to step in and help create a sign for us. We used an antique piece of the mother's to have the guest book and floral arrangements on. We had some showers just in time for the ceremony, which we described as many, many blessings for the bride and groom, and things cleared up and the rest of the evening was truly magical. For the reception for this event, we did want to have an atmosphere that just made people wow. In the mother's front yard, there's, there's a huge oak tree. We really wanted to accent that. We used willow spheres, as well as crystal chandeliers, and then lastly, we created our own willow floral chandeliers. What we did was hang the chandeliers at different levels, which kind of brought the space in a little bit, so that there was a really defined area that the guests would be able to feel comfortable and cozy. For the food for this event, we created a bride's indulgence station, as well as a groom's gourmet station. On the groom station, we actually had leek-wrapped salmon served with succotash, which is a very traditional Savannah food. Lastly, we had a bourbon Vidalia onion pork tenderloin served with a sweet potato gratin. Now for the bride, we used tuna tartare, but we presented those in savory ginger cones. Shrimp cocktail trio with blackberry cocktail sauce. She loves the statue that her mother has. We incorporated that statue into the food station to signify you know, the mother and how much they love one another. I feel confident that as the years go by, they'll always look back on Tideman Park and remember such a special event that they share with their friends and family. To see more on Southern Grace's catering, head to the local resources pages of GetMarried.com and click on Savannah, Georgia. Up next, a unique guest book that holds more than just signatures. Back in a moment. What's hot right now for weddings? Honor of your presence. Our guest book is the Keepsake Guest Book and it's very unique to the market. There's nothing else like it out there. Some of the unique features are the accordion binding which allows it to be opened and displayed. We decided we really wanted to try to create something that wasn't just a collection of signatures but something that could be so much more. The envelope pages are a big feature. They become these little compartments that your guests can fill with notes pictures, trinkets, and anything from your day that would make it even more memorable. We definitely suggest leaving the camera nearby or anything that would enhance the creativity of your guests. 
The covers are all beautifully handcrafted using beautiful silks, Swarovski crystals and pearls. They're custom designed based on the theme and style of your event, or even just your own personal style. One of the things that makes the book so different is when you have it opened at your event, it's something that completely displays itself and just becomes a beautiful and artistic table display. We provide all the note cards and pens that you would need for your book, along with a little table display sign to let them know just what to do. So that is something that your guests want to interact with, they want to be a part of. And then the buzz starts moving around the party and everyone starts signing it. This is a hot must-have because it becomes this beautiful keepsake and collection of items from your guests that you may not have ever had. Cards get lost, other things get lost from your wedding. This is a way to keep everything in one place and have all these memories kept in this beautiful little time capsule. For more on Honor of Your Presence, check out the What's Hot pages on GetMarried.com. Have you discovered some fabulous finds while planning your wedding? Well, now you can share them on Get Married's Blogger Brides. Get Married's Blogger Brides is the online community that connects you with other brides and our team of acclaimed star bloggers. Make friends, follow your favorite blogs, and get some great ideas, all on Get Married's Blogger Brides. I'm Colin Cowie. We'll see you right here next time.